So I thought I'd do a little bit of side-by-side -side comparison between my Rigol MSO 1104Z and the Roden Schwartz uh, RTB 2004. These are both on the probe compensation outputs. The probes are set 10 to 1. Uh, both DC coupled. You know the probe looks well compensated there and I went through the calibration steps for channel 1 here and it looks well, well calibrated here. So. What I'm hoping to do in this video is take this really crappy pulse generator, whatever you want to call it, you know, square wave generator that we look at in a separate video, and just compare the two scopes side by side, on, you know, on some low frequency, you know, two megahertz and under square waves, and just see what we can or can't see uh, on the two scopes. Uh, this guy is upgraded to 300 megahertz. Well, the Rigol is the 100 megahertz model. So it might be interesting just to see what we can or can't see and to kind of see them side by side. So both scopes are connected to the 2 megahertz output. They're both connected to the same ground point. Come over and take a look at the Rigol. We see some significant undershoot there at the bottom of the waveform and a little bit of overshoot on both the uh, leading and trailing edges at the top of the waveform. If we come over and look at the Roden Schwartz, we don't see that dramatic amount of undershoot on that 2 megahertz signal. There's a little bit there and we see kind of the similar shape uh, at the top with a little bit of overshoot and undershoot on, on the, the high side. Uh, Full scopes are set to 200 nanoseconds and 500 millivolts. Uh, the triggers are in pretty much the same location. So interesting, that makes me wonder which one's telling me the truth and which one's lying, especially with this large amount of undershoot I see over here. I think I'm going to step back and recheck the probe calibration on the Rigol one more time. And we'll go from there. So the probe compensation looked fine on the Rigol. Not sure where all that undershoot was coming from. This is a 1 kilohertz square wave. You can see there's a little bit of a... I'm going to call it overshoot on the trailing edge there. Come over to the Roden Schwartz. We see that same little bit of essentially overshoot on the trailing edge there. Uh, you know, the signals are very comparable. So, you know, that looks good. So here we are looking at the rising edge of that 1 kilohertz signal. We're at 20 nanoseconds per division. We see uh, about... I mean, the rise time is pretty decent there on this for what it is. It's 5 nanoseconds or so. We've got that little bit of ringing dip at the top. And then the signal rolls off. See a very similar waveform on the Roden Schwartz. Uh, you know, it looks very comparable at this point. The uh, signal, or, you know, the trace on the Roden Schwartz, I think, is a little clearer. They both show a fair amount of noise, given how crappy the power supply is. And this little guy and the age of those electrolytics, I'm not surprised. That there is a little bit of power supply noise. Uh, I did find the Roden Schwartz easier to dig into here because I can simply grab the waveform and drag it. Uh, and I can drag it very quickly. It's uh, I'm very much falling in love with the uh, touch screen on the Roden Schwartz. I very quickly found that edge just by manually scrolling and got it displayed here. Whereas on the Rigol, uh, I had to go in and actually play and keep centering that edge and zooming and, and uh, centering that edge and zooming. Uh, there's 10 nanoseconds, there's 5 nanoseconds. Let's go ahead and skew it over here. 5 nanoseconds. Come in here and give myself to 5, there's 10. There's five nanoseconds. Interesting on the road in Schwartz, I'm seeing a fair amount of jitter and movement 
you can see it on the rising edge there. Hopefully the uh, camera's picking it up well. A lot of jitter on that edge, a lot of noise. And over here on the Rigol, it looks cleaner. There's still a lot of noise in that waveform, but it looks a little cleaner. And I think that's where we're starting to see the difference uh, that 300 megahertz versus 100 sampling makes. Let's push this up a little harder. That's at 2 nanoseconds per division. You can certainly see the jitter on the signal there as this uh, re-triggers. Let me go in and do a single trigger and just grab a single. There's a single trigger on it. Let me come over here and we'll also go to we're at 5 nanoseconds per division which is the lowest we can go here. Let's grab a single trigger. I need to come back here, apples to apples, back to 5 nanoseconds. Let's get it positioned in a similar way. Again, they look very comparable. They're both at 5 nanoseconds at the moment. Uh, very comparable waveform. Uh, one of the things I am noticing, and I don't know if you are or not, so we come in here and look. Oh, I'm catching the uh, microphone cord here in the test rig. You can see in places there that that waveform is a little boxier. Uh, you know, a little less smooth. This has got an 8-bit uh, A to D. If we come over the road in Schwartz with the 10-bit A to D, I think a little bit here we may be seeing a little bit cleaner perhaps although it's still kind of boxy in places oh waveform i mean in no way is this a a rigorous test but it's an interesting look uh, you know with this little uh, crystal oscillator and some ttl dividers it's not like we get you know a huge amount of <laughs> drive for to get the rising edges nice and crisp and that kind of stuff uh, but you know somewhat more of a real world example uh, I don't know that there's any advantage at this point to the Roden Schwartz just looking at this basic waveform versus the Rigol uh, they're both doing a decent job though for me at this point the Roden Schwartz with the touch screen is uh really nice to be able to go in here and drag this up and position it can I zoom anymore I'm at maximum zoom it looks like at that point but just being able to interact this way it's just quickly becoming second nature. I've actually found myself reaching for the screen on the Rigol a couple times and of course it doesn't do it now. Difference in price point here for what I paid thousand uh, dollars for the Rigol. I got the Roden Shorts for two thousand but it's uh, full retail with all the installed options. It was closer to seven thousand. Uh, do I need this much scope? Probably not. Do I want that much scope? Of course I do. Uh, see if I can find a couple other signals to throw at the things and we'll do a little more looking side by side. Yeah.